Sister Pauline, we want to say hello to you. We have a few people that are watching, 27 are watching. They're coming on as we speak. Hello, hello, hello. So the comments will just show up on the bottom here. So Sister Pauline, would you begin by telling us a little bit about your journey to the Adventist Church, your Christian journey, and how did we end up having you as part of our lives uh, as a wonderful gift? Well, my experience in coming to God first, I've grown up in a Christian family, okay. but um, just because my parents are Christian, mm -hmm. that, that, that doesn't make me a Christian. Mm. Um, when I was younger, I had these night people going around the community okay. inviting young adults okay and children to Tuesday church okay so um as they took as so every Tuesday when they took us to Tuesday church um I've got to really learn about who Jesus was, I mean, is. From the right? Mennonite church? Right. That's amazing. So I, yeah, I got to learn who Jesus is. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so That's I, they continue to like teach me about Jesus, teach me about how incredible mm. is to humanity and how he can of a center like myself, mm. I decided to give my life to Christ. Now, mm. how I came to the Adventist Church. <laughs> yeah, that, that's 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 part of the story where we're gonna get to. I don't. It's one of those things we wanna jump right into. That it's like, how did you go from a Mennonite being influenced by them and having had a little bit of that? You know, and at least being introduced to Christ. But how did you end up in the Adventist Church of all churches? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? How did? What happened there? <laughs> so, I had my best friend in third grade. Mm. She was a Seventh Day Adventist. Mm. I was looking at her as if she was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> only because I've always gone to church on Sunday I thought like the Sabbath is on Sunday right exactly <laughs> but she would always tell me well she told me I invited her to church on Sunday and she said Pauline I'm a Seventh-day Adventist I go to church on Saturday wow but I but in my spirit, I just felt like convincing her to yeah. come to, to church on Sunday. She needs to be converted. Why <laughs> Sunday is the Sabbath. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so, um, during that period of time, I just didn't believe her, right? But mm. then I questioned because, because she stood firm in her faith mm. of when the Sabbath was, I had to question myself. She never compromised. Myself for Sunday, right? Mm. So, <laughs> so I'm like, if, if Saturday is the Sabbath, then why are we going to church on Sunday? Mm. So, that's when I continue to just dive in and do some research. Uh -huh. So I went on Bible flock. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bible flock box on YouTube. Yes, yes. On YouTube. <laughs> That's my guy. That's my about guy. The Sabbath. Yes. And I also watched. School for a prophecy. 
Oh, yeah, well yeah. Yeah, yeah. To learn about the Sabbath. Very nice guy, too. Yeah. And then, at the time that I was going to church on Sunday, I asked the lady that I was working with, mm -hmm. I asked her, I said, if, no, first I asked her, when is the Sabbath? Mm. And she said, it's on Saturday. Boy. So I said, <laughs> if you just claim Saturday to be the Sabbath, why are we going to church on Sunday? Mm, that's a million and dollar then, question right there. <laughs> and, and then she said, mm. well, times has changed and Jesus froze on the third day. So therefore it's a celebration and it's an honor to, to, to him to worship on Sunday. Mm. And then I asked him, like pardon? I'm sorry. Keep going. You're fine. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the pastor. I said, Pastor, <laughs> when is the Sabbath? <laughs> yeah. And he said, it's on Saturday. And then I said, I asked the same thing. If you know the Saturday is on Sabbath, why are we going to church on Sunday and observing as the Sabbath? That's a big and question. He said the same thing the lady said as well. So I felt compelled in my spirit to just go in the Bible and read. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so as I read in the text. Yeah. <clears throat> Very clear. The six days who should work and on the seventh day you should, rest. should rest. Correct. So <laughs> so um and then I asked my Ethiopian friend mm. because the Ethiopian calendar like hasn't changed, right? Yeah, they, they have a so, long history with the Sabbath as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So I I asked her, I said, when is the Sabbath? And she says it's on Sunday. And <laughs> and then I said, How do you say Saturday in the Ethiopian language? Mm. Right? And That's she a good said question. it's Shabbat. Oh boy. And That's then I hard. asked my Hispanic friend, how do you say Saturday? Sabbat off. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and he said and he Sabado. 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 Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So as the emphasis I continue, on the first syllable. Right. So as mm -hmm. I continue to just dive into the word of God, I'm like do you know what? I don't care what man says. Yeah. Like, I care about God. Like, I yeah. want to follow what Jesus wants from me. Yes. So, fast forward. <laughs> when I went to college, I started to fast and pray for three days mm. and I asked God to reveal himself to me. I said, God, I don't want to go to church on Sunday anymore since mm. that's the third day. Continue mm. to reveal yourself to me. So as I continue to fast and pray and my spirit just cried out to him, mm. um, I felt so I did research mm -hmm. for research. three churches. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty so, amazing what happened when you start doing your research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for the three churches, right? Yes. So the church that was closest to Albright, which was the college that I attended, uh -huh. was 
Hampton. But okay. I, I, I'm Hampton Heights. And mind you, I did not um, have a car on, on campus at that time. Okay. So the options was Hampton Heights, Crowhobit, okay. or Kenhurst. <laughs> I, I really wanted to attend for a whole bit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I felt compelled to attend Kenhurst. Good. So I had a conversation with God. <laughs> and I said, God, how in the world am I going to go to Kenhurst when I don't have a car? Yeah. <laughs> and we're like on the other side of the world for those of us for those of you who know <laughs> right but because i was hungry for the word yeah Crucial. and i was filled with the spirit mm. i just i was driven to just walk an hour and 41 and it's two Ken Hunts. Beautiful. And it beautiful. was on a hot day too. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. the thing about it, when I was walking to Kenhurst, I was not tired. And when <laughs> I got to Kenhurst, <laughs> That's I just felt I asked a lady a question. I said, Did you know? The Sabbath is on Saturday. And she was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> so, Everybody um, knows here. <laughs> I met Sister Doreen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she gave me a warm hug. Like, I just Aww. felt. She started well, at Kenhurst. Yes. Right. Yes. And then I went to the Bible studies in the Hotai Purpose Room. Mm. That's when I saw Will Peterson. Mm. <laughs> That's teaching, another one. Um, like teaching Sabbath school. And as I continue to learn more about the Sabbath mm. and about like being an Adventist and our core beliefs, mm -hmm. um, that's when I just started transitioning like in my faith to become a Seventh Day Adventist. What would you say, what was your faith in the Lord during that period? Would you say the Adventist church played a role in strengthening your relationship with Jesus? after you discovered the sabbath as also as i discovered the sabbath i would say i had the conviction mm -hmm. of the truth but i was in <laughs> denial you were in denial <laughs> oh okay so that's when an i went that's a good admission hers, the adventists confirmed my conviction yeah and as i continue to do Bible studies, it confirmed it even more. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's how I decided to just be an Adventist. And then okay. I met you and you and Miss Andrea and Miss Barbara. Oh mm. my goodness. You guys just took your time, took me under your wing and just taught me about the Catholic Church, taught me about how <laughs> Sabbath was changed to Sunday, yep. <laughs> taught me about like, the fundamentals of um, yeah. the Seventh-day Adventists, right? Yeah. Um, so that, that's how I came into my, my faith with being yeah. a Seventh-day Adventist. That's beautiful. You know, yeah. I know some people are probably thinking, uh, I really appreciate you sharing this, but some people are probably thinking, and I know you got a testimony to share, to tell, you stutter, right? You have a speech impediment. And they might be yeah. thinking, how did that happen? Would you mind taking a 
at least the next two, three, four, five minutes or so to share how it happened and and how the Lord had done a, a powerful miracle even in the midst of it. Yes. So, um, when I was eight, I fell out of a third floor window. Third floor window. And while falling, um, I hit my leg on an air conditioner and I broke it and I fell right on concrete. Now, during that process, I wasn't aware of what was happening. Mm. Um, my grandmother told me she cried out for help in our the dialogue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then a good Samaritan, I should say, a Samaritan. neighbor came over and saw me in my grandmother's arms mm. and he put his hand in my throat to take out the, 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 the tooth that was blocking my airway oh okay and when he took out the tooth that was blocking my airway um i was trying to ask for air mm -hmm. from what i was told and then they called the cops the cops called the ambulance, but the ambulance had to call the helicopter because I was that bad. He was that bad. Everybody thought that I was going to die, but Jesus had the final say. Amen. So out of that accident, anything else could have happened. I could have been paralyzed. I mm. could have been <laughs> That's amazing. Or just anything. Yeah. But the only thing that came out of my incident was my speech impediment. Okay. And I mm. praise God. Yeah. And the beautiful thing ab about it is although I asked God why did I have to have a speech impediment? Mm -hmm. I understand why. Okay. The speech impediment has built my character. Amen. <laughs> the speech impediment has taught me so many qualities mm. that also reflects mm. Christ is. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. It shows humility. It showed compassion. It showed love. It showed understanding. Mm. Like, so, although I asked, why me? Mm -hmm. I changed the question to, why not me? Why not me? <laughs> that was beautiful. Because wow. he's preparing me. <laughs> yeah. And the amazing. The entire process, even when I did not see it. Hey man, the amazing thing is, and this is a very common thing. You don't have a speech impediment when you sing. You have a beautiful, you have a beautiful voice. You sing at the church all the time, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, but you know, when you sing, it's like it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, it's funny. I googled that because I was like, wait, yeah. how is that possible? And when you look on the internet, apparently there's some scientific reason why there's something with music in the brain. I guess just. It has uh, there's some, some different connections that happen than when oh, you're just wow. talking so i guess that's something to do with it i, I don't know all the science but th there's something to do with that <laughs> okay okay but well, it's still it's still it's still very nice to yeah to listen to that that's that's powerful um so what is the lord doing with with you at this time where, where do you plan to go well the Lord has put it in my heart to attend CORE. Can you tell us about CORE? What CORE is? What do, what do they do? So CORE, so core um, Evangelism is okay. a program of at the, 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 the Blue Mountain Academy. Okay. And it's a 
fourteen week program. Okay. And in this program, it prepares students to live a biblical lifestyle as okay. well as win souls. Um, it pre it prepares students to develop their confidence in ministry, right? Okay. And as well as having integrity and contributing to the church as well as um, our community. As and, and not only are we going to do experiences, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are going to be doing hands-on experiences. Okay, such as like I'm looking at I'm looking at the website now as we speak. Mm -hmm. So you also get to do hands-on Bible study, evangelistic outreach. It seems to mm -hmm. include a number of things. I know it's been around for a while. For people who don't know about Core, is one of those places. Um, that you can go, especially if you're in a Pennsylvania conference, um, they will empower you, especially young people. They will empower you for ministry. Okay. So you can look it up, go to the website, coreevangelism.com. So what what made you this, make that decision? Why did you decide to go to core? Because I'm hungry. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's beautiful. To be like Christ. I am hungry to deny my flesh and take up my cross. Like, I, even thinking about this, it just makes me want to cry. Mm. But um, I just want God to continue to hold me into the woman that he wants me to be so I can save people's souls yep. to him. Amen. And I believe core is exactly what I need to help me develop the traits to get there. Amen. Amen. I mean, I think it's beautiful. I, um, you know, the, the, like the spiritual gifts you already have, you have a love for the Lord, zeal for him. You were gifted in singing. You're a prayer warrior, uh, a people person, and you have a very servant attitude. You're the girl who will show up with the camera at any time you will step in the kitchen. You know, so those things need to be nurtured, right? In order for you to be the kind of Christian the Lord wants you to be, the talents that he has given you, you have to reinvest them in such a way that you may grow. Do you have any personal ministry at this moment beside what you do in a local church? Is there anything else that you are doing that you're going to need support with? Or do you need any support with CORE, should I say, at this moment? I do need support. <laughs> um, so in order for me to have a comfortable experience, experience and not worry about the outside distractions okay. like, of bills and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I am looking to raise about like 3,500 okay. so I can have a comfortable stay um, up at core. Okay. Do you have a place uh, do you have some kind of donation page or something already set up? Pardon? Do you have a donation page already set up that we can maybe share with some of the people that are watching at this moment? Um, I have. I gave you my cash app, so okay. Um, okay, so the cash app is the one that you you use. Okay. Yeah. So the cash okay. app is calling tenants. So that's to support me as I stay on campus and I don't have to like focus on bills or whatever. Um, so okay. um, I'm also going to be doing a internship as well um, um, at 
up at core and i will be doing some photography up there as well okay. as well as pursuing my studies okay so um anything that who can give to help my experience of core to be a smooth transition okay i am more all right i'm gonna all right i'm gonna put a link to your cash app to support pauline there's also a link of it in the description of this video uh, to support pauline is there and for any of you who feel that the spirit of god is touching your heart in any way to support the church is doing some things our family is also stepping out in faith to support pauline and if any of you watching and love her testimony and experience you want to support her that is also there that's going to give you a direct link to her cash app is one of the means through which you can actually help her so um pauline if you were to share a final message to people who either is not your story one thing that reminds me of it reminds me of a person who is like i want i hear the truth i see it i believe it and i follow it it's like you don't have a complicated christian experience i'm not saying you don't have challenges like a complicated a person who is fighting with god when it comes to the truth i'm not saying you don't have things going on in your personal life but more like it's kind of like when you i hear a lot of people when they hear the truth either about the sabbath or certain subjects that they're not used to they like fight with the lord they fight and make excuses that's not what i heard from you it was more like whatever you want me to do lord i'm ready like there is this I'm ready to surrender to you. I'm ready to serve you by any means. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? So what would you like to share with a person who is a Christian now, who is either struggling to make a decision um, in their lives for Jesus or any conviction that they have of a particular truth? How would you share with them uh, what it's like to, to just give, give themselves over to the Lord in the way that you have? I would say... Despite of your background, despite of your circumstances or where you come from, when God is calling you, go. God will provide and take care of the rest. But God is the God of truth, and He has. <laughs> Your best interest. So, if he has impressed something on your heart to enhance the kingdom of God, just pursue that. I promise you, <laughs> I promise you, it will all come together in the end. God wants what's best for you. Just open your heart out and give him a chance to allow him to show you who he is man he didn't That's promise beautiful. it's gonna be easy but he promised that he's going to be there through the minutes of it all yeah man yeah man Wow, that's beautiful. <clears throat> that's beautiful. Um, I would like to pray for you at this moment. And those of you who feel impressed to assist Pauline in any way, once again, the cash app is in the description below. It's one of the means through which you can assist her. Uh, and also keep Pauline in your prayer. She she loves the Lord and she's growing. She has a heart and a love for the truth. And she loves people. She loves people. She wants to see people saved. And I think, um, yeah, it's, it's very obvious. I've known you for four years and... It's just amazing watching you grow. It's like you're growing beautifully in the Lord. Um, and you just like, you can see it in everything from not only your beauty, you're a beautiful girl, first of all, but you have a beautiful spirit. And you just like, I see you in, even in the way you used to dress. You, you're starting to dress like in ways I'm like, look at, look at her doing her thing. But it, it, it's just amazing watching it. And also like, the one thing that really captivate me is not just the fact you have a willing uh, attitude to to surrender to the Lord. It's like you're always ready to serve. No matter what's going on in the church, it's like Pauline is there. She's either with her camera or she's somewhere assisting with something. 
she's very active in ministry and that that speaks volume so um i want to pray with you and pray for you uh for for people to bless you let me see what the comments are saying i'm not sure if you can read some of the comments they they're saying a lot of a lot of good things about you we we would like to pray with you and for you pauline uh, i'm glad you're back your phone is is back and um yeah do you have anything specific i know you go on the core and that's definitely something we're gonna pray for Anything else that you would like for us to pray for you about before we, we close our testimony here? Um, I would say pray for God to continue to give me the hunger and thirst for righteousness mm. and pray for him to just mold me into the woman of God that he wants me to be so I can make an impact on others. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we do want to thank you at this moment. We want to pause and bring before you a daughter, a friend, a, a person who is determined to serve you. We bring Sister Pauline before you at this moment, Father. Pray that you will continue to bless her in her ministry, in her desires to serve, and also a willingness to do your will. She is stepping out in faith right now, going to core. This is a drastic, drastic change, and but it does have some, some amazing benefits attached to it. I pray that you will bless her and keep her and sustain her by the power of your love. And also, I pray that you will prosper her steps and uh, that she will encounter Jesus in a much deeper and real and honest way. I pray that you will open doors for her, mm -hmm. Lord, that her ministries will prosper as well. I pray that you will increase her faith, uh, bring souls near her, whereby you will have her, her to minister to. I pray that you will also provide for all of her means and you know her situation that she's in, her family, her concerns, her life, and the many things that she's doing as, as, a, as a young lady in the Lord. We know that it's not always easy serving you um, in this world of sin. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be her guide. Mm -hmm. We pray that you will give her a double portion of your spirit even more. I pray that you will just keep her in the palms of your hands. As the Bible says that a woman can forget a sucking child that she shouldn't have that compassion on the sons of her womb. Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget you. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, and that thy walls are continually before me. I pray that you will keep her in the palms of your hands. Father, you said, and he that toucheth you toucheth the apples of my eye. And we pray that her protection will also be secured as it is in her relationship with Jesus. We thank you for her powerful testimony and her experience and her desire to serve you. We thank you for the work that you've already begun and the work that you continue to do in her life. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Pauline. Thanks for hanging out with us. And once again, guys, remember to support Sister Pauline in her ministry. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We would love to bring you back once again, especially for some singing. But Okay. Bye. I don't want to <laughs> let, me know. let you do this. Yeah, we're going to make sure you do it at the right time when you feel ready. So, all right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. -bye. Right, God mm -hmm. bless. All right.